I will send you the link. You don't need to send me the link. I can get it uh, directly. And we're going to put the live transcript on. There we go. Are we? Yep. I will let them in. Great. Morning, Frederick. Good afternoon. Your microphone. Good afternoon. Hello. Good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Can you hear me now? Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Morning, Lauren. Microphone. There we go. Good morning, Hugh. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. Hey there, Lauren. Hi, Steve. Long time no see. Good morning, Owen. Good morning, Allison. Oh, hey, sure. Hello. Hello, Steve. Hi. Good morning, Hi, Steve. Frederick. I'm using a cup I thought might be appropriate in I Denmark. Uh -huh. There's a moose in Denmark, right? No, no. Sweden? Should get some, maybe. Maybe we can export some from Canada. We're looking to uh, to increase our exports. Yeah, okay. that's good. <laughs> Looks like a tasty beer. <laughs> Hope so. <laughs> it's for later. <laughs> oh, and I just saw pictures of your family this morning. It was lovely to see your daughter in New Brunswick on Facebook. I was like, oh my gosh, there's Owen on his whole family. Nice. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, she's working for Carteva now in communications. So she's uh, she's staying in agriculture. I was happy yeah. about that. That's cool. <laughs> And nice to see Lauren and all my like my Canadian friends that I never see. I'm like, yay, hi Lauren. Hey, Alice. Hi Myrna. <laughs> you have to go to Denmark to see your Canadian friends. It's kind of weird, but you know. Well, Allison, I hope you'll be out in the Maritimes in another week or two. So maybe you can grab a coffee while I pass your month. Absolutely. Or a beer on the beach. That will work too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, there's Canada. <laughs> Ten years ago, wow. <laughs> A great Congress. Morning, 
Courtney, because we go. You look nervous, huge. Sorry, Jürgen. Hello, how are you? I'm good, thank you. At least it's not five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so the funny story is, of course, the first day was five o'clock for us. The second day was five o'clock for us. So yesterday morning when I got up at four o'clock to make a cup of tea, I put the tea bags in the pot and I poured the water in, but I forgot to take the old water out from the day before. <laughs> so when I went to have my tea, it was lukewarm and old tasting. So I said, oh, uh, I gotta get some. <laughs> now I get my coffee. Thank you, Nima. The West Coast too, it's now, you know, Almost seven, so that's a far cry from the three a.m. Gotta say, yeah. <laughs> this is better. Sounds good. Where are you, Daniel? In the beach? Actually, I, I'm in a holiday. Uh, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I arrived to have a holiday. Uh, wow. Yes, I'm in the beach. I'm in the somewhere in the very wild beach around the uh, Danube Delta. Wow. Not very far off the Danube Delta. Great. It's a bit difficult with the signal, but uh, I can hear you. And I said uh, hello before to Hugh, and he just uh, speak about uh, 5 a.m. I just remember him that a few months ago at our conference, it was, I don't know, 3 a.m. in Canada, <laughs> and he, he helped us. Thanks a lot, Hugh, once again. Here in Denmark, it's four o'clock time, four o'clock oh. tea. Yeah, but but here it's already I don't know 5 p.m. It's afternoon <laughs> on the seaside. Hi, Hugh. So people are still coming in, um, but maybe we could start, uh, you know, if you could do the official words of welcome and then um, after which we can hand over to our Danish hosts for a toast. And uh, then we'll go over to Adi and Norma for the star prize presentation. Uh, of which we have great anticipation. And then finally at the end, uh, we'll organize some breakout groups. So if you want to stay and socialize, it's a little early in Canada to be <laughs> drinking at 11 o'clock in the morning, but the Danes, I'm sure it'll be five o'clock. So you'll be, you'll be right on time. Okay, so welcome everybody to this last day of our e-congress, the third and last day. And uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing about, about Danish Congress and fingers crossed that it will be in real life next time. So uh, please, my Danish colleagues, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. And then I will uh, start uh, telling you about the Congress uh, in Denmark in 2022. And I'm, <clears throat> I should start to say good morning, good evening, good night, and good afternoon. Uh, I hope there will be people from all uh, over the world listening and also coming to the Congress in Denmark uh, next year. Um, I think uh, our Congresses have many purposes. Uh, one of them is to, to learn about agriculture, but another one is to learn about agricultural journalism. Mm -hmm because uh, I think that's not uh, maybe said enough. It is very important because uh, for, uh, agricultural journalism has uh, a very important goal. It's, um, well, many, there's a lot of, lot of knowledge. And that if that doesn't come out to farmers and companies, 
well, it doesn't uh, uh, do any good. So, so our purpose is to, to work on that. And uh, our Congress in Denmark will, you will see a lot of agriculture, but we will also discuss journalism because that's also important. But first of all, we would uh, present a video about uh, agriculture in Denmark. So could you please uh, uh, start the video, Hugh? Okay, just give me a second. Yes, uh, next year. Um, I think uh, our conferences have many purposes. Uh, one of them is to, to learn about agriculture, but another one not is to learn video. about agricultural journalism, because uh, I think that's not uh, maybe said enough. It is Welcome to Denmark. Because, Welcome uh, to a country uh, with a population of 5.5 million has, uh, people, 20 goal. million pigs it's, uh, and half a million cows. Many, and to a country a where more than 60% of the land area is used for food production. Well, we are still emerging from a corona pandemic, but with great enthusiasm, we are again working at... Welcome to Denmark. Welcome to a country with a population of 5.5 million people, 20 million pigs and half a million cows. And to a country where more than 60% of the land area is used for food production. We are still emerging from a corona pandemic, but with great enthusiasm, we are again working at full speed to prepare the IFAJ 2022 Congress. And we are excited that we can welcome you to Denmark next summer. Denmark is among the leading nations in ensuring a better, greener and more sustainable future. Denmark is one of the market leaders in both primary and processed food production, food equipment and the ingredients industry, in close collaboration with our best-in-class know-how and science environment. An international report from the World Resources Institute presented that Denmark excels when it comes to producing milk and pork with a low carbon footprint. This is mainly due to a good food efficiency, farm management and manure handling, but also because we collaborate across the food value chain where we are working towards common goals, reaching sustainable results and to document it locally as well as globally. Legislation, consumer demand and the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals are all central across the agriculture and food cluster. The cluster is under a lot of pressure, from the global challenges we are all facing to the local demands from green organizations, animal welfare organizations and politicians. The message is clear. We need to act now. Although we work in global value chains, there is a strong focus on how we in Denmark can achieve the UN's sustainable goals at national level, as well as the farm and company level. It started when the Danish politicians in 2020 passed the country's first climate law, a reduction in greenhouse gas emission in 2030 by 70% compared to the level in 1990. Therefore, it is no longer just a good intention it's a goal for the whole cluster. On top of science, we achieve results that benefit food quality, animal welfare, biodiversity, bioresources, nature, environments, carbon footprints, food waste, work environments, housing and production. Our successful researchers, entrepreneurs and food producers are taking this seriously and are already future-bound when it comes to knowledge of resource efficiency, sustainability and innovation. One example is that the production of biogas has almost doubled since 2012 in biogas plants and it is only expected to grow in the future. Some of the biogas plants return slurry to farms with a nutrient content that is tailor-made to crop requirements. Biofuel made of straw and slurry using energy from wind turbines and pyrolysis might be the future within sustainable fuel for airplanes as a project called SkyClean is looking into. 
Biorefineries are developing sustainable and climate-friendly protein from grass, clover and alfalfa produced on local biorefining plants to lessen the amount of imported soy protein. If we had grass in one out of four fields, the Danish challenges regarding nitrogen leaching would be solved. Growing more grasses will therefore help Denmark reach its climate goals at many levels and at the same time reduce carbon dioxide emissions. Digital technology is the next frontier for sustainable food production. Here too, Denmark is at the forefront in the development of new robot solutions and the incentives and funding to entrepreneurs are leading the way for tomorrow's growth. Robots are already highly successful in field work, but also IoT solutions and data integration is a focus area to ensure that we can document a lower carbon footprint. New technologies to lower food loss is emerging, ensuring better measurement and durability. Denmark is at the forefront of the development of new technologies and solutions and we are ready to share our knowledge when it comes to resource efficiency, sustainability and innovation. Innovative entrepreneurs and companies are leading the way for future growth through robots and predictive maintenance for smart food processes and GPS and drone technology for crop management. The cluster has taken the lead in setting goals not only to live up to the demands from society but also to document results. A key to success in working with sustainable development goals is to clearly document and communicate about the impact that the company has in relation to the goals. Danish companies work to a large extent to report with transparency and openness and visualize the concrete work with the SDGs so that the most important stakeholders can assess the company's specific contribution. To do it smarter, it takes innovation, new technologies, new partnerships in the value chain and new ways of collaboration. New technology is one of the motors that will drive the green transition. Despite our small size, we in Denmark have a long track record as world leaders in innovative solutions. We are all part of the global food supply chain and we all need to take responsibility for the future. We must collaborate to ensure a reliable supply of sustainable, safe, high quality food to consumers all over the world. Climate and environmental changes demand that we think differently and that we collaborate across borders. We need to think our local food production in a global context. We find ourselves in a time where the UN 17 Sustainable Development Goals have become more relevant than ever. As always, the Danish Agriculture and Food Cluster is ready and prepared to make a positive contribution. During the IFAJ 2022 Congress, we will show you how our farming, agri-tech and food cluster are facing these challenges and how we do it smarter to reach a greener and more sustainable future. To do it smarter, it takes innovation, new technologies and new ways. Yes, okay. Um, so uh, we really have a TV star there. Um, thank you. Um, now I would uh, like to uh, expand a little on, on the, the theme of the Congress next year, because uh, last year when we had a toast to Denmark, we expected it to be 2020, then 21, then IFA 2022. So we started back in 2016 to prepare it. And since then, things have changed a bit. The focus has changed a bit. So therefore we have changed our theme for, for the Congress. 
and uh, Hugh, if you could uh, find that slide. Uh, um, it is uh, the, 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 the theme is smarter farming uh, and food production for a green and sustain for green and sustainable growth. Um, yes, I have to tell you, Frederick, uh, you've done too good a job on that video. We don't need to go to Denmark anymore. We found out <laughs> everything from the video, <laughs> but we'll come and see you anyway. Yeah, well, uh, okay, I hope so. Uh, if you mean that, then we, we then we will not show the video on our Facebook any longer or our on our <laughs> website. I, I intended to tell that that you can of course see it there if you think it's uh, too much uh, in in a short time. But okay, now you can see the the new theme for our uh, Congress: smile farming and food production for green and sustainable growth. And maybe some of you feel the same as I do uh, about the word sustainable. It's sometimes some Thing. It's very often, I mean, something everybody adds to whatever they do because then they are uh, okay. Uh, but there is actually a definition of uh, sustainable, and that is uh, about many things, not only economy, not only social issues, not only environment, not only climate, not uh, only, uh, yeah, what, what else? Uh, it's, it has to be a sort of all of it. And um, you will have you would, uh, have the opportunity to to visit companies and farms next year that all do something extra about uh, this sort of uh, sustainable uh, farming. S some who are uh, ahead of the general uh, level uh, of farming. Uh, so I hope that will be interesting. Nowadays, it is climate change we we, we talk about all the time. We would talk about that also, but also the other. Uh, parts of uh, sustainability. Uh, and uh, Denmark is among uh, the, the, the leading nations in ensuring a better and greener and more sustainable future. At least we work hard to be uh, that. Um, and it's something that is, uh, I, I, yeah, I could mention the, the UN, uh, 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, it's also uh, sort of uh, important for making farming sustainable. Science is, of course, very important. So uh, we, we, uh, when we do the, the uh, excursions next year, we, we try to find where the, news, where, where the science has new innovations and uh, show you that in all the different, I mean, um, uh, areas like food quality, animal welfare, biodiversity, bioresources, nature, environment, carbon footprint, food waste, work environment, housing and production, etc. cetera. Um, so that's what you can see, but it doesn't mean uh, that you, that what we told about the excursions last year, everything has not changed. It, it's not the exact uh, same plan and we are still adjusting it, but uh, you would still be able to, to uh, see um, or follow uh, a track if you're interested in pigs, for example. Uh, there would be several um, excursions about uh, milk production and cattle. There will be uh, animal welfare tours. There will be several uh, tours about uh, organic farming. Uh, and um, altogether, uh, we have planned uh, 20 excursions and that's more than we promised last year, uh, because uh, we have one more day uh, with excursions in, in the new plan for, for IFAJ 2022 Congress, 20 uh, altogether. Um, so um, we involve a lot of people to, uh, to prepare that and to be, to be ready uh, to show to you. So I think that everybody would... Uh, not be able to attend to all 20 uh, excursions, but on four days you can uh, attend four uh, different excursions from a, a big range of um, possibilities. So uh, now I'm already just telling a little about the, 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 the Congress itself. It's actually also uh, one day uh, longer than we had planned before, uh, but uh, it doesn't mean it will cost you more. Um, just, just that you will get more um, information and tours and 
we have um, planned to on, and we also have in, in, invited invited um, people from. Um, we have in, in invited the people from international organizations also to have a workshop on how to produce food and feed uh, enough for everybody in 2050 when we have a very uh, when we have have a much bigger population in the world it's growing uh, rapidly right now and and how can that be possible uh, uh, to to produce enough enough uh, uh, for, for food feed and, and energy as well. Um, and um, there, I could probably tell a lot more about um, the, the coming Congress. Some of you would maybe ask uh, what's, uh, what's the price and uh, our intention is that it is, uh, we do not have a fixed price yet. I cannot say that, but as our intention is that we uh, keep it uh, under the uh, 1,000 euro um, and uh, then you can probably get a discount if you sleep uh, together with uh, 20 other people and you may pay a little more if you need if you like your own private room uh, etc but uh, the, the, the the price we do not uh, expect it will exceed the 1000 euro it will be that's our goal uh, right now um maybe i forgot to tell that um, before the congress we have a pre Congress tour that will be in the area of uh, Copenhagen. Uh, we will stay in Copenhagen and uh, go out from there um, to to um, to and so we have actually more than the twenty excursions I, I told you before. And the the, the program for the pre Congress tour has also changed a little. And that has a very um, yeah, obvious reason, because we were supposed to visit uh, Copenhagen fir and a mink uh, farmer producing mink fir. But uh, last year during Corona, our prime minister uh, and the, the government, they closed down the, the mink industry, told all mink farmers, kill your mink, uh, we will pay you uh, for them, but you cannot produce mink any longer. And uh, so now, uh, in, during a, a few weeks, uh, all mink in Denmark uh, were killed. And uh, I think it's the first time in Denmark you have closed a whole uh, business area just by law saying you cannot do that. Uh, maybe you can do that again in 2022, but that is not a possibility uh, because mm -hmm. you cannot just, I mean, it doesn't, you, you need uh, um, animals um, for reproduction, etc., and you need uh, food pro uh, uh, production of feeds for the mink, and, and that doesn't just exist uh, when you have closed down for two years. Um, and that story we, we may tell you, but we can't visit uh, those because they don't exist. So instead, we would do uh, other visits, uh, um, and that would be within the theme of the whole Congress. And after the, the main Congress, we also have a post-Congress uh, post tour, and that goes to the Faroe Islands. And um, I, I can tell you, last, uh, in 2020, when we managed to say, invite you to the 2020 Congress, uh, that tour was almost uh, fully booked within uh, two weeks. Um, before we closed for the uh, Congress again. So uh, we think that it will be a very popular tour. The Faroe Islands are uh, small islands in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and they have um, um, some farming, not a lot, but uh, you can learn how to farm uh, in, a, in a country where it's never very cold, but it's never warm uh, as well. And they have sheep, some cows, and a lot of grass production, and then they also produce a lot of uh, fish as well, and it's a beautiful uh, country you can see there. So, um, yeah, I don't know if there's so much more to tell, but um, uh, we would very much like to be sure that you can uh, remember uh, when we have the Congress next year, uh, that would be uh, in week 26. But uh, actually, uh, we have a small presentation now from, from Stig. Um, and that is because our uh, good member, Jørgen Don, has written a song. So we can all remember when the Congress will be in Denmark next year. And I have 
from the last uh, uh, almost uh, one and a half year with Corona, uh, learned that you cannot sing together on Zoom and Teams because, uh, well, the sound is just coming out uh, too randomly from all the different countries from all over the world. So we have uh, asked uh, Steve to uh, we have asked Steve to sing the song for us, but you can f see the the lyrics on on the screen. And Steve, he is a very famous uh, TV star. You have just seen a video where he, he spoke the video. Uh, and he has also, he, whenever there's an opportunity to come on Danish television to tell about what the grass you will find on the, on the football fields, uh, then you will see uh, Steve as well. And now he will even sing for us. So Steve, please sing so we know when the Congress is. Okay, I'll try to unmute. Um... It's uh, We'll Meet Again. It's a, a melody composed by Ross Parker. And the uh, lyrics is a uh, famous Danish composer, Jan Lund Christiansen. So, you're, uh, you're welcome to sing along, but I'll lead the tone now. We'll meet again, I know where, I know when, in week 26 in Denmark 22. We'll welcome you, just like we always do, and together we will save our green, green world. So will you please say goodbye to the folks when you part, tell them you will be great and, and sustainable smart, we will show you a lot, it will be fun and hard. We'll meet again, I know where, I know when, in week 26 in Denmark 22. We'll meet again, I know where, I know when, in week 26 in Denmark 22. Come feed our brain, have a steak on our plane, fuel with Danish energy from wind and shit. So come and try our grass as a prize you will find for pigs also first class. See the know how behind, we will show you a lot. So it's not more any hot. Mm. We'll meet again. So I know where, I know when, in week 26 in Denmark 22. Jutz, come on with the new verses. Because I'm last words here. We'll meet again. again. I know where. I know when. In week 26 in Denmark 22. We must admit our wine can't compete with the Okanagan Valley, white and red. But bring no wine in your bags. We will brew your beer and find time to relax. You will better come here. We will show you a lot. It'll be so fun and hot. Mm. We'll meet again. You know where. You know when. In week 26 in Denmark 22. Thank you very much, Steve. I think now everybody can uh, unmute and uh, give him a hand. So, <laughs> and, and uh, then uh, it's also uh, well time. If you have questions about the uh, uh, Congress, uh, you want me to answer now, then you're you're welcome. Uh, I think we have a few more minutes. So come on, if you have questions. Yes, we have a few minutes. So if you if you have any questions for Frederick or uh, Jorgen or Stig uh, about the, the program, this would be a good time. And we, we won't sing more, so don't don't be afraid <laughs> to ask questions. I have a question about the Faroe Islands, will you have more spaces available, do you think? 
Um, I think we have 20, but uh, well, um, I'm not 100% sure, but um, uh, if you want to go, then uh, hurry up. And if we find, find more spaces, then maybe. Frederick, is there talk of a um, vaccine passport for Denmark? So say again, please. Is there any talk of a vaccine passport? Oh, for okay. Um, well, mm. uh, I don't know what uh, there will be next year, I, but I, I would recommend everybody to have a vaccine. Uh, we do have a vaccine uh, passport in, in, in the EU uh, right now. Um, and uh, that opened many doors for people, but I think uh, most people who are vaccinated, uh, people who are vaccinated are right now able to travel to Denmark if they can find a plane. <laughs> and we do travel around in Europe uh, right now with the, the Danish, you know, with, with the European uh, uh, Corona passport. So uh, I don't know what the regulations will be in next year, but I do hope that it will be easier <laughs> than now. But uh, now uh, you can travel to Denmark in the situation Hello. we have. I, I have an additional uh, question uh, to elaborate on this. Uh, uh, do you have already an idea that if it turns out uh, next uh, summer that uh, some countries uh, are allowed, uh, to travel to Denmark are people from some countries and others not. Uh, is there an idea that that can make a uh, uh, decision, uh, change decision to, to, to go on with the Congress or not? Uh, what are your thoughts about it as an organization? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, and uh, well, I, I, I mean, we plan to have this Congress next year, and we plan and we hope to see uh, 200 uh, people from all over the world. But uh, we are fully aware that it may be not be the, the whole world. Uh, but uh, that if if there is uh, oh if it's open to um, a relevant number of people, we will do so we will have the congress even if some cannot come because uh, we hope well uh, then they can come the next year or the, the year after and um, so 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 that's that's the idea that, that we will have the congress uh, but i mean it, it doesn't make sense if, if if we are very very few who can come mm -hmm. but but i think uh, we cannot uh, hold back until every country three in the whole world would be able to travel and Difficult. Is, that, uh, is that the answer uh, for your question or? Yeah, I understand it's really difficult, I would say, uh, but uh, I think we all uh, have a little bit idea that uh, in half a year from now, this can be definitely the situation that you have to make a decision on this point. Yeah, and we will, but we will have the, we will make the de decisions we have to make when uh, time comes. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> a lot of wisdom. We have, we have a lot of experience on that. So, so are there some, uh, now I'm checking the, the, the chat if there are some questions there. Otherwise, I would just say um, thank you for, for listening. And, and we, we do hope to see you next year. We, we do a lot to make it a success. So, thank you. Great, thank you, Frederick and team for all your work, because we know what it's like to organize a conference, and uh, especially under the circumstances that you've had to go through, we do hope it's uh, going to be the best success. All right, so um, we'll move over to uh, Adi and uh, Norma, who will now uh, present the IFAJ Star Prize. Okay, welcome to the IFAJ Star Prize 2021. Thank you for being here at another different award ceremony. The way of celebrating is different, but the quality of the best work in the world remains intact. I also want to congratulate and thank all the journalists who have sent their work. All of them are really excellent. And of course, I want to especially thank the jury, which once again 
was made up of prestigious and experienced professionals who dedicated their time to evaluate each of the submitted works with great dedication. Okay, and as David Bowie said, let's dance. IFAJ Star Prize for Broadcast 2021. These are the professionals who made up the jury, Jan Petri, Prue Adams, Ken Randall. A special thanks to Lee Redford for coordinating the jury for this category. So let's move on to IFAJ Star Prize for Video. And the runner up is a very engaging piece in what seems an edition of a well-produced magazine program for rural producers in Kenya. Judging by the insect lady, they have excellent contributors capable of explaining things clearly and get right to the practical heart of issues. An excellent example of extension work. Congratulations, Lois Wachira from Kenya. Brown Leaf Gold, the Black Soldier Fly Agripreneur. Great job. Okay. And now move on to the winner of the IFAJ Star Prize for video 2021. This is a very important story. Thought-minded rural people involved in agriculture are supposed to be able to fight through anything, but at what cost? This story explored that cost and the resilience of the particular family. The fact the community rallied around them is not surprising. Excellent video, sound, and editing. Congratulations, Paula Williams from Ireland, Casual Mart. Okay, let's move on now to the IFAJ Star Prize for Audio. And the runner up is a very professional, especially podcast. This journalist had obviously researched uh, and paid attention at the event, thinking hard about the choice of interviewees and the question most likely to spark the required response. Congratulations to Stephanie Gordon from Canada. Takeaways from the canola. And now the winner of the AFAJ Star Prize for audio 2021. This was a most enjoyable audio entry. Great talent with engaging and interactive interviewing techniques used to bring out of the best. A fascinating window into farming in this remote part of Scotland. A lot of effort had gone into getting there and the war pictures created by the journalists pushed this piece into top spot. Congratulations, Nancy Nicholson from the United Kingdom. Black Rose and Blackface Sheep BBC. Okay, let's move on, move on now to FAJ Star Prize for Digital Media. Runner up. Well done for starting an online newspaper and having the initiative to go out and get the story. Solid writing with a good use of video and photographs. The company statement was a good addition adding balance to a story which impacted a number of agricultural properties. A strong contender for a top prize. Congratulations, Harry Clark from Australia. Coral seam gas, water spilled into farmland as Condamine River, tributary Charlie's Creek Bubbles. And now the winner of the IFAJ Star Prize for Digital Media is a winning entry because of its use of a broad range of digital techniques, the inserted video, the range of a strong photographs with des descriptive captions and the subject matter, all helped peace get over the line. The talent was engaging and likable. Congratulations, Laura Cole from Denmark. Christian save pigs lives. Okay, let's move now on the print awards. These are the professionals who made up the jury. Greg Lamp and Marcus Rediger. So now move on to AFAJ Star Prize for print. And the runner up is a well written piece with a especially good lead. Good use of farmer sources, uh, with it will together throw out. Congratulations, Sue Niels from Australia. 
turns in third. And now the winner of the IFAJ Star Prize for print. Credible quotes from producers shows well the challenges of local markets and, and its producers, corona damage of ag markets and government regulations. Congratulations, Mahamari Sibogo from Burkina Faso. Market gardening in Bagre and Lumbila, the cries of the streets from producers. Great jobs. And now let's move on to the last category, photography. These are the professionals who made up the jury. Johnny Belinda Clough, Jim Patrico, and Janice Thologood. IFAJ Star Prize for Photography, Nature and Landscape, the runner-up is here. Searching for a compelling disaster photo is not a, a, as easy as this might seem. First, you must avoid the temptation to rely on this thing, which is a wide angle shot of the devastation. Then you must find a focal point, an eye-catching anchor, and then you must put in the context to tell the story. This photographer did all those things very, very well. Congratulations, Brad Fleet from Australia. Kangaroo Island Fire. And now the winner of the IFAJ Star Prize for Photography, Nature and Landscape. A very unique and different from so much of what we have seen before. Sharp and clean lines, lovely unique and mute colors. Really, really interesting to look at it. Congratulations, Lauren McClinton from Canada. Blue Oyster Mushroom. And now let's move on to our FAJ Star Prize for Photography, People. And the runner-up is an amazing profile picked, very creative, really well done. Great framing, good lighting, good background, so many great elements, including the photography talent in this photo. Congratulations, Rob Matson from the United States, portrait. And now, the winner of the FAJ Star Prize 2021 for photography, subcategory people, a really great composition to communicate that visually. Nice, clear focus on subject and perfect blur in the forefront to bring the eyes right to the main subject. Congratulations, John Christensen from Denmark. Don't kill my farm. Let's move on to the FA Jester Prize for Photography subcategory production. And the runner up is great use of perspective, depth of field and leading lines to bring focus on the subject, which is nice and sharp. Side lighting is also very nice. Congratulations again to Rob Matson from the United States, driving cattle. And now the winner of the AFA Jester Prize for Photography Production. Composition and colors are really nice and good choice of vantage point to demonstrate the severity of the slopes. Congratulations, Martin Mintz from the United States, Palouse Hillside Harvest. Great pick. And now, the photo of the year. The photo of the year was taken by Martha Mintz from the United States, Palouse Hillside Harvest. Incredible pick. Martha is here, I think, no? Yes. Okay, in this way, we conclude the FAJ Star Prize 2021 award ceremony. Congratulations to the winners and congratulations to everyone who participated in the contest program this year. Next year, I look forward to having the applause from our room full of friends and colleagues when we finally meet in Denmark. In the meantime, entrants uh, stay tuned for feedback from the Jutes in your inbox soon. 
and everyone head over to the FAJ website next week to dive into the winning entry entries. And please don't leave, stay for our virtual social hour. Great, thank you. Thank you, Vadi. And uh, as we head into our social hour, we're gonna go into breakout groups and uh, some of the winners will be there and uh, you can have a chat with them. And um, just to let you know that with the breakout groups, they'll be automatically assigned. So you'll get a group of people, but you can move between the different group groups. You can um, skip from one, you can be a social butterfly and skip from one to the other. So um, I'll go back to Lena, if you have any closing words for the e-Congress before we go into the, into the social aspect. Yes, I, I just want to thank you all for attending the e-Congress these three days. Uh, I think it has been the best we could offer when we can't meet in real life. And uh, I also want to congratulate all the uh, winners today. I think there was lots of good enterprise entries. And uh, uh, to Denmark, I want to say, we know you have an interesting agriculture. There's much to study there. But I'm also looking forward to the Danish uh, hygge and beer and aquavit and everything else you can offer us. So see you in Denmark next year. Bye. All right, thank you everybody. Here we go.